another Dork Lair action figure review. Today, I'm taking a look at the Mythic Legions as a Hazar from the Poxis Wave. So this Ogre Scale figure is to me one of the coolest lore figures in all of Mythic Legions. It's actually a really cool story. So uh, one of the Dark Four Poxis, which this wave is named for, he was, you know, doing his thing and needed to summon some, some muscle and summoned the demon king to the world of the living to mythos and in doing so he actually split him into two i think i think it was accidental like that that summoning split as a hazar into azar and zazar the blue and the yellow demons from the first wave and then eventually poxis was banished again covenant of shadows brings poxis back and he rewarded Azar and Zazar, who had sort of been, I believe, had been sort of trapped in the world of the living. He rewarded them by recombining them together back into Azahazar, which is the look we have right here. And before I forget, I just want to point out that this figure is blacklight reactive. My thumbnail and my opening shot used blacklight. And so I'm going to turn the blacklight on so that you can see how it looks with the blacklight with less light around it, just so you can see what parts i think it's obvious that the bright green parts are going to glow but let me flip that light on so there it is with the light on and then if i turn the other lights off let's see here if i turn that one off and then this one off you can see how <laughs> that looks so sick i mean look at that thing glow so that's with the black light on that looks badass i just i love how that looks. And if you look very closely at that head sculpt, you can see that all of those lines are sculpted in not, not every single one of those lines, but there's quite a few of those like cracks throughout his head that are sculpted in. And then inside those cracks have that reactive paint. And then some of the other ones are just sort of drawn on there. Um, some are deeper than others, but you can kind of get a look at the sculpture on that head there. The body does not have any of those recessed parts. This is the same body as the, the ogre, the half giant. So they're just reusing that sculpt. So it doesn't have any of those like sculpted in, you know, like lightning bright green parts. And I do have a little paint slop here and there. It's kind of hard to tell when you're looking at it this way, but when I took a photograph of it with the black light on, you could see like some lighter pieces. They they really glow bright, um, and it's just like a little sloppy here and there. But for the most part, it's it's a really cool look. I love this head sculpt. You do have horns here that are removable, and these are the same horns that came on the helmet head that is on uh, both or the tower. So. Those you could mix and match. Got some pieces there that are compatible. Then we have these new shoulder pauldrons. These pop on and off into the ports on the back, just like any other shoulder armor. And they look great. They kind of have like almost like a metallic look, but they also are sort of organic, which is a contradictory, which makes demons, you know, kind of fitting for demons that kind of seems unnatural that way. Some nice shading differences. You have dark, dark greens on the arms and the upper part of the body. And then into the chest area, it gets brighter over there. And then it's all dark on the back and you have the overlay armbands. These ogre scale figures don't have forearm pieces. It's just a solid arm from elbow to hand. And this piece is over the top. So you could take that hand off and then you could have a bare arm right here. And that looks excellent as well. So that's just another option you have there. And then a look at the belt that does have the visage of Poxus himself on there. Lots of great detail in that belt. I think this is the same belt that's used across a couple different figures, but it's two parts. So this piece is like a glued on belt buckle for lack of a better word that you know the the company can mix and match with other um, front pieces for that belt amazing cloth goods designed by c jessam you've got a skirt piece around the back and then you have a loincloth on the front really nice color to it and then the legs have that same really dark green and the same lower legs that we've seen but this time they have like a, a speckled metallic almost gives it that celestial kind of feel to it and the hooves are also painted in that reactive, bright, fluorescent type of green. 
And here he is zoomed out so that you can see the overall proportions of this body. As you can see, it does have like slightly shorter legs. That comes from the idea that the ogres, this is like the ogre body. So ogres, it just feels right for ogres. Whether or not it feels right for a demon, I'm not sure, but I, I think I like it. I think this looks really good overall. And the hooves kind of raise it up a little bit, I think, higher than it normally would be anyways. So looking pretty good here. Height-wise, he's probably like just about nine and a half inches to the top of the head. But if you go to the top of the horns, it's probably 10 and three quarters. So this thing's almost 11 inches tall to the top of the figure. And of course I have to start the video off with the twins themselves. So when he split apart, he split into Azar, the yellow demon on the left and Zazar, the blue demon on the right, and then was reformed into this as a Hazar character. So as you can see, he towers over those standard 1.0 style you know, just standard Mythic Legions figures. And then here we have him with a couple other 1.0 style Mythic Legions figures. On the left is his boss, Poxis, incredible figure. And on his right is the new Lije, the Elven Guard um, from the Retailer Wave. Also a fantastic figure. So you can just get a sense of, you know, two more 1.0 style figures. And then here we have a couple Shadow Elves. On the left is a kit bash that utilizes the Shadow Elf Warrior and Ravena. I think Ravena is like the perfect figure to smash into a Shadow Elf. And then on the right is my Mysteries of Mythos big hit, which is the Shadow Elf Ranger, a figure that I'm super pumped to be able to have added to the collection. And those are 2.0 figures, so smaller, slimmer body there. Next here he is with a couple brute scale figures. On the left is standard Kalazir just out of the box as he comes. Probably the best figure of that wave. And then on the right is um, a kit bashed version of Tharnog. And I put some gold parts on there just to make him kind of like a, a bruiser gladiator type orc. And then just to bring in a couple of the other ogre scale figures. On the left is the ogre builder and on the right is the Arachagor dragon character. And while they are compatible, the Arachagor figure is on a completely different body. It just shares the some of the armor parts and stuff, but the body is totally different. Bringing in some other fantasy figures, here we have some NECA Dungeons & Dragons Ultimates. On the left is Warduke, on the right is Elkhorn, and I think these fit in just perfectly with Azahazar. Here we have a couple figures inspired by Frank Frazetta's art, the Mezco 112 Collective, Conan the Barbarian on the left. That has some Kylab accessories on there. And then on the right, we have the Icon Collectibles uh, Dark Wolf Fire and Ice figure from the Frazetta Girls. Next up, here's a couple Super 7 Conan the Barbarian movie figures. A couple Tamashi Nations movie realization Ronin Mandalorians. Next, we have a Masterverse figure and an Animal Warriors of the Kingdom figure. And finally, next to some big chunky dudes on the left is the Axie Toys T-Rex. And on the right is the Golden Axe Death Adder by Storm Collectibles. It does come with this double sphere scepter that has a blue and a yellow for Zazar and Azar. My only issue here is that it's pretty wobbly on there. Like it doesn't peg on really well. It doesn't doesn't have that nice tight snug fit that I would hope it would have. I'll have to like do the nail polish trick or, or something to tighten that up. But it does have some cool details with like these insect legs, Poxis style. It does use the same ogre handle staff that all of the ogres come with. And it does have an extension for it. So if you want it to have like the super long scepter it can go that long and if you look closely there are some green details at different points of that staff he also comes with a pair of really cool translucent flame effects in this green color and they actually you know you could either pop the hand off and slide it in or it just kind of you know stretches around and what that means is you could either do it on top of the bracers that are there on top of those like arm wraps like this or you could pop the bracers off and then you can put the arm on there and again you don't have to actually pop the hand off to get it on um, because you can you can thread it around 
But anyway, that's how it looks with it on the arm without the bracers and then on the arm with the bracers. So you could do it either way. And in addition to a pair of gesturing hands, he does come with a pair of regular gripping hands with horizontal hinges. And as for articulation, that is usually the weakest aspect of the ogre scale figures. He can look his head up a bit. The horns are getting caught in the back there. I think he could go further if it wasn't for the horns. And then he can come down that much. So a little bit of tilt here. And of course he can twist his head all the way around. Um, so, you know, that that's fairly standard ball jointed head. Arm is on a hinge. It can come up to that level, which is pretty good. Shoulder can swing all the way around. It's obviously gonna knock that pauldron out of place, but you can just pick it back in. Then you do have that single jointed elbow that doesn't even come up to 90 degrees, a little bit shy, and you have a twist at the elbow, twist at the wrist, and hinge at the wrist. Unlike 1.0 Legions, there's no forearm twist because this piece comes over the top. Pretty good range in the torso in terms of crunching forward and back cocking side to side or twisting. So that area is, you know, moves really well and is a nice range there. Ogre scale figures do have a ball jointed um, hip now. They've switched over after uh, some issues that they were having originally, and that can come out into the splits. You can twist it at the thigh. It can kick forward a decent amount and then back really not much because there is a butt under there that kind of gets it stopped then you have a knee joint that again not even 90 degrees twist below the knee twist at the ankle hinge at the ankle it's you can hear it's loud mine is pretty tight there and then you do have an ankle rocker as well and just a couple pop and swaps here i took the decebolus figure and i used the purple skirt the purple arm wraps and the shoulder armor from Azahazar. And I think this does a really good job of kind of bringing uh, Decebalus even closer into that like Alithia's brood kind of purple colorway with that skirt and stuff. He does actually have some purple stuff. Like if you look at his boots, those are his boots and he does have some purple on there. So it is a really nice match. And I, I could see myself keeping Decebalus in this configuration, which is just a really nice look in my opinion. And my other part swap here, I took the reverse, basically. This is the skirt and the arm guards from Decebalus, and I put them on as a Hazar. And this just brings them to another darker level that I think is fantastic. And this look can equally be as effective as that other swap. So I'm very tempted to leave these two in this sort of position. Um, I, I, I like this quite a bit. Final thoughts, this is a really cool figure. The head sculpture, these new shoulder armor pieces just adds a lot of just interest to the ogre scale. Of course, it's not going to have great articulation, but the character, the personality, the story in that sculpture just makes up for it all. Anyway, thanks for watching my video, and until next time, may the force be with you.